My health improved so much when I started setting boundaries. Overall stress levels improved and it was working. And it's hard to ignore when something's working to go backwards. Like now I know what I know and I'm not going to go back. No, why would you? Yeah. Um, but I will say this for people pleasers or recovering people pleasers like myself, it is especially challenging to get it to, to start because people won't know you. They know you a certain way. Mm -hmm. They expect a certain behavior or, and they don't expect a certain behavior. So when you change initially, it's uncomfortable for people. Welcome back to Humanity Unlocked. I am your host, Kimberly Diet, and today I am super excited because we have Katera Ross, licensed marriage and family therapist, back with me in the studio this week to discuss a hot topic in our world these days. Many people have heard of it, some have experience with it, and others have struggled trying to implement it because it's not necessarily something we are taught. We are talking about the topic of boundaries. And it's funny because literally whenever this word comes up in conversations, whoever I'm speaking to, they always reply jokingly with the question, what is a boundary? Like, <laughs> like people just don't have them. So today we will answer that question and others, so sit tight. But before we launch into our conversation, we have some exciting news. Katera has been a guest on the podcast multiple times. And when I interviewed her months back, she announced her plans to open a private practice by the end of the year. And it is now official. Katera opened up her practice in December. And at the time of this recording, she is taking new clients. So for those who are new, Katera Ross is an LMFT specializing in cognitive behavioral therapy, dialectical behavior therapy, solution focused brief therapy, as well as motivational interviewing. Katera has over 20 years of experience working with a multitude of mental health disorders and conditions, including but not limited to anxiety, depression, OCD, ADHD, and PTSD. She offers marriage and family counseling, individual one on one counseling, and also therapy for children. I'm not sure though, like what age do you do with children? Uh, 15 and up. 15 and up. Mm -hmm. Okay. So over the, over the age of 14. The name of her practice is Think Well Mental Health Services, and you can find Katera online at thinkwell.health. I will be sure to leave a link in the show notes for those who want to get in touch with it. I've asked Katera to join me to discuss a topic that feels particularly relevant this time of year around the holidays and always really, but it's the topic of boundaries, how to set boundaries, how to enforce and maintain them why having strong boundaries is important in some relationships. Um, we talk about the anxieties we have surrounding the issue. A lot of us know we need to get better at this, but I think um, we either don't know how, or if we do know, we're afraid to create one because of, you know, out of fear, basically. Mm -hmm. um, so Katira, before we started in identifying the different styles and types, um, let me ask, how, how often is this coming up? Like, with your clients and what, what is the biggest challenge that people are having with it? I mean, this topic particularly pretty much almost in every situation comes up pretty, pretty often in every therapy session because clients do want to set boundaries. They just don't know how to go about doing that. And there's that whole fear of rejection and the fear of like hurting the person's feelings. So really I would probably say most of my clients at some point or another talk about battery. We talk about batteries mm -hmm. um, because you know, they don't have, they don't have clear boundaries with family, with friends, and it impacts their mental health. Mm -hmm. So it comes up really, really frequently. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, because it could be what's best for you, but in the, but meanwhile, you're what's best for you. You don't want to lose the relationship. Right. So it's like walking that fine line mm -hmm. that we all, I think, struggle with. It's like, a, a doing what is best for us while maintaining our, I mean, yeah, it's just, okay, we're going to get into all this. Um, okay. When you have a client who, who is wanting to set them, um, with another person in their life and, and doesn't know how, or they're nervous, walk us through that. How do you advise them to approach it with the person that they need to? Well, I mean, yeah, th this is the tricky part. This is why people don't set boundaries because they get really scared about this process. Yeah. I mean, first and foremost, you have to know what your boundaries are. And if a client doesn't know that we kind of explore that in therapy um, and it should be based on your values um, or the things that, you know, are important to you. Um, and it's important to remember like your boundaries are yours and yours alone because it gets too enmeshed where they kind of take their boundaries and make it about someone else's boundaries. Right. Um, and then many of their boundaries, you know, might align with those who are close to you, but some of sometimes those boundaries would be unique. Mm -hmm. Um, so you, you really have to know what your boundaries are before you enter a particular situation or even like a discussion. Um, and this will make it less likely that you'll do something that you're not comfortable with doing. Right. 
it, well, I, I think it's also interesting because like the first thing you said, your boundaries are unique to you because my, I am very aware that I have boundaries that other people don't. Um, it, it, you probably, because of my health issues, mm-hmm. like I have to, I have right. to, it's the only way I can stay well. Um, and I am a recovering people pleaser. So I would like literally, um, work myself into the ground, trying to please everybody around me and I would suffer. And so I have boundaries that most people don't have to worry about because they don't have the same issues I have. Right. So a lot of times people are not going to understand your ba- if, 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 if you're like me in that way, if someone's like me, they may not understand your boundaries, but it, and we're going to get into this, but you have to assert them. So at least they will respect them. Or exactly. you, yeah. You'll have respect for the fact that you have them. Um, when I think about boundaries, just broadly, a couple of things come to mind. One would be, you know, stereotypical in-laws <laughs> or, or issues with parents. Like once we're adults, issues that, you know, we have with our parents still. And I, and I even watch this with my own, my own son, who's 21. Like I have to, and I, I have to say, I've been really good. And I think, um, I think it's because of my own experiences, not to say anything bad about any of my parents or in-laws, but you, you, you become more aware, like, okay, I'm going to do this um, with my child. I I never want them to feel this way or whatever. So, um, with, but we, we feel entitled to our children, to Mm -hmm. our children's time, to their attention, to, and so, um, there could be that, um, there's an entitlement aspect, I think with, with just about anybody who's going to breach someone's boundaries, um, with, with most of these scenarios. Um, what are some of the scenarios that you, are coming across most often where people are having a difficult time setting them? Um, well, I think again, too, it's that, that huge fear of like not wanting to hurt the person's feelings and overstepping. But again, the other person's overstepping their boundaries. Yeah. Um, so like a good example, um, I had a client once where, it, um, you know, she had two children and her mother would come visit every year and visit the grandchildren. And the mom had very rigid rules in her house because she was a single mom. And so she wanted to enforce responsibility for her kids to do their, their you know, household chores. Right. And so when the grandmother would come visit, she wanted to be a grandmother and just kind of spoil the kids. And she would kind of take over and do all the household chores for the, the two children. And so the mother's getting, you know, my client, she's getting really upset about it because she's like, my mother's not adhering to my boundaries. Right. And so a conversation had to be, you know, held, which was very hard for her to do because she thought, well, if I, if I share this with her or tell her, she's never going to come visit again, right. which wasn't the case. But I mean, that was the fear. So it took her a long time to kind of get to that point of like expressing how she felt and letting her know, like, this is the reason why I have these boundaries in place mm-hmm. for my children and I need them to be respected. In that, in, in cases like that, sometimes it's just a misunderstanding. Oh, it's absolutely. just like they don't realize they think they're being nice and helpful and they don't realize and. Sometimes it just takes us, you know, having, explaining it, you mm-hmm. know, for them to be, I mean, for me, even like if I, if somebody sits me down and explains something that I didn't know, you know, when you know better, you do better. I mean, hopefully, right. you know, we hopefully, hope so. <laughs> um, but you know, I guarantee the mom wasn't trying to, you know, um, yeah. So disrespect her in any way, but also to like, in that scenario, the kids were witnessing her or could witness that as being like a disres- disrespect towards their mom. Like, oh, she can override her rules or whatever. Right. Yeah. Um, also too, money. Um, that might be a big one for people. I know, I know you have a story about something that occurred with someone who tried um, getting you to spend or send them money. Right. You being a therapist though, obviously you know the importance of boundaries, but I know you and I'm sure you had some human emotion attached oh, yeah. to that when, when that occurred. Do you want to share the story and... Yeah, it's, it's, I mean, it's an interesting story because this is a, a very close friend of mine when the situation happened. And so she, um, it sounds kind of silly, but it, I mean, it's important why it's I not. this boundary. It's not. So, so at the time she was struggling financially and she had one day sent me a picture of her like in a dentist chair at the dental office. And she just basically said, you know, I, I, I can't pay for my dental bill. Can you send me money? Um, via cash app which is kind of like venmo just randomly on just, the spot. just randomly like i hadn't heard from her for like months and then all of a sudden just like this text came through and i'm like this is kind of strange and of course like me being me like i want to help if i can i'm not going to question it right. um and then my husband who's a logical one <laughs> you know was like no you're not going to do that and so he said he suggested you know why don't you just like let her know 
that you're going to call the dental office and you'll make the payment over the phone. Well, she didn't agree to that. She kind of proceeded to say, well, you know, can you send me the money um, direct deposit to my bank account? And then I started to think like, this is really strange. This is really strange behavior. Why wouldn't she just want me to pay her bill? Because that's right. what she was asking. And so I had to set that boundary like right then and there because I knew if I didn't and I would provide the money to her, that this might be like an ongoing issue. And I didn't want to like feel uncomfortable with her with around money. Yeah. And so I basically told her, you know, I can, I offered again, I'll call the dental office and I'll pay the bill. And she didn't respond back. Here's the thing with the, with the money. Um, I always say, um, if you have money and you're, and you're not giving it, it's mm -hmm. very little to do with the money right. and more to do with the boundary for, in, in my own experience, yeah. um, if somebody's asking for an amount that is inconsequential to us to give them, it has obviously has very little to do with the money, but more about the boundary because some people you give them an inch and they take a mile. Exactly. And this money is just one example of that, right? So mm -hmm. this is in all areas, but um, that's a tricky one too because the, it's it's um, issues like money or those kinds of situations that really tend to be the one the issues that really can um, I don't know they they seem to be break or um be the most damaging yeah, i should say friendships and yeah you know relationships with family members i mean it's huge yeah yeah you know, and i didn't want to like set that premise of like i'm going to help this one time and then there's an expectation of yeah. to help every single time i've had that before mm -hmm. i've had and, and it's so uncomfortable and it's, it's so very awkward and it's like oh it's not that big of a deal like i could totally give it but i don't want them to keep thinking i'm an atm you know yeah Oh, so rough. And that was hard because they spent a lot of time just staring at my phone like what do I do with this right you know and right and I and honestly probably I would have just given her the money if my husband wasn't like wait a minute because you wouldn't have questioned it back. I wouldn't question it yeah it's a friend in need like I'm gonna do it yeah you know but, but there's other reasons to maybe think that she was just trying to get money for another reason yeah, yeah that's when yeah that's, that's, that's what it was yeah right. <laughs> um you mentioned um some people it's as simple as even like social media like adding people i've had this where it's like oh i haven't had that all. i mean it's happened like maybe <laughs> once or twice but i understand um happens to you probably a lot more um where people want to add you on social media they want to follow you and watch what you're doing and it's like no no you know yeah. and obviously you as a therapist what's been your experience with that i've had a lot of friend requests on social media from from former clients and even current clients and you know, in this profession, you have to have very solid boundaries around that. So and it's an important reasons why for safety, number one. Yeah. And so it it's a hard conversation to have with clients because, you know, you don't want to hurt their feelings either because yeah. not that they're trying to be your per se or your friend, but they just want like that connection. And so I've kind of started in my therapy sessions now when we do the um, consent process is to kind of go with the social media aspect. Like, you know, I'm not allowed to add you as a friend you can't request me just to make it very clear in the beginning in, in, instead of like waiting till it happens and then it's more uncomfortable to talk about it then it's a good idea mm -hmm. it's a really good idea i think you know we, we spoke about this in the pre-interview i think with your profession in particular it's hard because yes. i'm i'm sure like your clients some of them probably have never told uh, most of the people in their lives, what they what they're telling you, mm -hmm. you know, and in their experience, a, a, a long term connection with you, you mm -hmm. know everything, and so it's only natural to want to develop like a friendship or a kinship or with with that person. I mean, that's a natural, but it's like at the end of the day, this is a professional mm -hmm. relationship, and oh, that's that's so hard because it's not as if it's like I don't like you. It's it it's important right. for, it's important for the integrity of this therapy session right. that we uh, keep it professional. Well, there's been many um, examples I've heard of even like fellow colleagues of mine where they kind of overstep those boundaries and were put in harm. Because the client would like find where they lived and came to their home. And so it's it's really more about the safety piece more than anything. Really? Okay. Because, I mean, again, too, even these days, you know, you can find someone so easily online, um, find all the information about them. But I remember in grad, graduate school, one of my um, co classmates that happened to her. Mm -hmm. And so she really regretted the fact that she even, you know, yeah. added this person to social media. But she learned. I yeah. Mean, yeah. Not, Wow. Um, yeah. I would think that would be um, fewer than 
like I probably most people would just be like, oh yeah, I like her. I want right. to see, like, I want to see what her personal <laughs> life is like. What's her family like? What's her, yeah, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. <clears throat> okay. So obviously the word boundaries, it's like the word du jour right now. Mm-hmm. Um, if you don't know, I think, I think that in French, that means word of the day or <laughs> something. So. <laughs> That's my husband. He speaks French. Um, similar to, you know, narcissism and gaslighting, but I think it's because all, you know, all three of these issues will oftentimes coexist. Um, and the public just has a name for it now, like where we did it before. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, in previous years and where I'm going with this is there seems to be a particular type of person or personality who is drawn to people who have no boundaries. I used to attract them. Um, because they can, they can extract what they need from their relationship without really any consideration. And I'm sure, you know, this, this can lead to all kinds of trust issues from the person they're doing this to. Um, and in some more extreme cases, I I think even abuse, right. Um, abuse of of power or whatever. Um, so I'm going to ask you for some tips on how to set healthy boundaries, but first let's walk through the three different styles. So we have rigid porous Mm -hmm. and healthy. And I think there are five different types, which is physical, emotional, sexual, time, and intellectual. So I'm going to go through these for the listeners in terms of the three styles, rigid, porous, and healthy. Obviously the healthy style seems like the one we should be aiming for. Um, But what does it look like when somebody's boundaries are are rigid or porous or like, what's the biggest difference between the three? Well, for rigid boundaries, an example that would be people who avoid intimacy and close relationships. So they're, they're more unlikely to ask for help from other people. Um, they have very few close relationships, um, very protective of their personal information. Um, they may seem like a bit detached, um, even with their romantic partners. Um, and they just kind of keep other people at a distance just to avoid the possibility of rejection. Mm-hmm. Um, so again, that's not a healthy version of a boundary because you're so closed off to everybody. You're not letting like anyone in. Yeah, that's almost like it's too much of a, yeah. too strong of a boundary. Exactly. Yeah, okay. Um, And then the second time is porous boundaries. And those are just people who overshare their personal information. Um, They have more of a difficulty saying no to requests of other people. Um, They're often over-involved with other people's problems um, and just really dependent on the opinions of others. And they they are accepting of abuse or disrespect. So they kind of let people like walk all over Mm -hmm. them. Um, and they fear rejection. And obviously, this is why they just kind of let people in with no yeah. no question. Um, and they just don't they they just don't comply with others' wants or needs. Yeah, yeah. Um, what do you see the most of? I would probably say more of the porous. Yeah, I I feel like I've been both. Mm-hmm. I feel like I'm I'm coming out of a rigid time. I definitely was porous for most of my life. And then I was very, very rigid. Um, but it's it's because um, fear. But what led me to that was feeling like I couldn't trust anybody to respect my boundaries. And this is no one person, or like right. it's not. It's it's more of a. It's it's my own. Like I'm I'm quick to take accountability. I realize like I am not really great at this. You know, I'm really good at sacrificing myself to for the cause or whatever for other people yeah yeah yeah. so um I knew like for me it was like I needed to become rigid to like for me that was a a way of protecting myself like Mm -hmm. I closed off myself from everybody and everything for years and now I'm like trying to become more healthy um so but you're but the poorest thing to me sounds more like um people pleasing more um needing to be accepted and everything yeah yeah, and I kind of fall in the same category as you. So I used to be part, partly rigid, more porous. Mm-hmm. And so I kind of learned, like, can't do, you know, kind of to kind of go towards more of the healthier boundaries. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um. All right, so we have the five types. So we're going to go through them and give examples for why each of them are important. We have, okay, so physical boundary, that's the first one. Why Why is it important to have a physical boundary or like what's an example of one? Um, well, I mean, this just kind of refers to personal space and physical touch. Um, I mean, to have a healthy physical boundary includes like just having like an awareness of what's appropriate and what's not um, in various settings and, and just different types of relationships. You know, it's more about like, should I hug that person? Should I shake their hand or should I give that person a kiss? Kind of like determining like what's, oh. what's appropriate. I know that can be hard in many situations. Yeah. Um, even like a handshake, some people kind of like yeah. reach out and they like pull back. Like, yeah. should I do this? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know. Yeah. Um, but I mean, 
with physical boundaries, I mean, they can be violated if someone, you know, obviously touches you and you don't want them to, or when they invade your personal space, which that to me is a huge one. Yeah. Um, like close stalkers. Yes. <laughs> yes. How do you deal with that? It's so hard. I actually so had an experience hard. not too long ago where I was um, at a friend's house and there was, uh, the person was like drinking, you know, alcohol, not, not intoxicated, just kind of had a little bit too much to drink very close proximity to me, like almost like sitting on my lap and just very, became very emotional. So it was really hard because like the personal space was a problem. The rest I could deal with, right. but the personal space is like, this is too close for comfort. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah. I, I, um, <clears throat> I used to work in a job where I was a property manager and, and, and I did leasing and leasing agent and did tour apartments and stuff. Um, it's before I married Mark. And, um, I, some people would come in because you stand to greet them and they come in and they will walk, you know, usually it was men. I don't know. I don't know. The women didn't tend to do it to me as much, but they'd walk right up to you. And then I just, and I would back up, but then I thought, you know, what would happen if I didn't move? Are they just going to like stay there, push me over? <laughs> right. So they, when I, when I stood firm and did not move, they actually did realize like how close they got to me. And then they stepped oh. back, but I don't know if it's a, power thing like they're trying to assert their I don't know if it's that or I know a lot of people too when they talk um and I, I don't mind this so much but I'm sure some people would um they like to you know like tap or touch or touch, something, yeah. hold your hand mm -hmm. like I it, that stuff I don't mind especially if it I mean obviously if it's a woman or if I know you or whatever but um the close talkers to me, well, you'll have me backing up all around the house. Like, right. You know, like right. It's like a dance. <laughs> so what do you do in those scenarios? It's hard because you also, you also have to take, take in consideration culture because some cultures, True. close proximity is accepted. So if you don't know the person's culture and they're kind of like getting so close to you, like how, how, you're not going to know that. Wait, but what, what, what about that is cult is why is that? Why is the culture relevant? Probably because of the eye contact. Some oh. cultures really like to have really clear eye oh. contact, whereas like most Americans, we do eye, con eye, eye contact, but not that's not. I focus. never ever considered yeah. that. Right. Wow. But if you don't know the person's culture and you're like trying to back away, they're going to probably take it as a form of disrespect. Right. Oh, that's so good to know. Mm -hmm. That's so good to know. Wow. Okay. Um, but you really can't. I mean, can you say something though? Not really. <laughs> you can't. I mean, I guess what you would, your body language would say it. You would just sort of back up or maybe cross, cross your arms. arms right. Or like something. Give yourself more space. Give yourself, the, yeah, um, send a signal. I mean, I'm sure some people would not have any problems speaking up. I know some of those people would be like, what are you doing? You're like, back right. off. Okay. Um, but then some people don't even pay attention to those cues at all yeah, and they just kind of keep on with what they were doing because it's normal for them exactly and most people wouldn't say anything mm -hmm. okay so how about an emotional boundary um well that just refers to obviously a person's feelings um if you have healthy emotional boundaries um that includes like limitations of when to share and basically what to share and when not to share um you know because it's important to like determine like is it appropriate for me to share this personal information with this person that I don't maybe really know um you just kind of like determine that for yourself so it's like a personal boundary that yeah your own personal emotional boundary exactly okay mm -hmm. um like an example of this would be like you know if you gradually share personal information like during the development of a relationship I mean that's appropriate because you're getting to know the person yeah. um but if you're kind of revealing everything to that person right from the get-go that's not healthy because you don't know this person well enough and I, I just always go back to the thing about safety right you know why do people do that you know they might just feel really comfortable with the person or they feel they, feel they just have to expose everything like right from the, from the gate just mm. I don't you know it's hard to everyone's reason is different those people like me they, they do that <laughs> I get that all the time I'm sure you do I do I'm sure you do yes um yeah, I find that I the life stories come out very quickly. Very quickly. But weirdly, like, I don't, I don't mind. <laughs> I don't, see, I don't either. <laughs> weirdly, it doesn't bother no. me. I mean, I could be somewhere where I don't even know, like, a good example, I was at this event one time, and um, this friend of ours had come up to me and told me this friend of hers was having a really difficult time emotionally and asked if I could go talk to him. And it, it was kind of an awkward situation. I'm like, well, yes, I can. I don't really think it's appropriate, like, with the setting. But I did. And I mean, he just unloaded everything. Didn't know anything about me. 
didn't even, I mean, I think he knew I was a therapist, but like besides that, didn't know anything about me. I think with therapists, there is an uh, understanding that you're probably the least judgmental person in the room because you've heard it all. And you're a safe person. You're safe. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Um, I think with me, obviously I'm not a therapist, but I think because I ask so many questions, people just go, oh, well, she doesn't care. I'll just keep talking, (laughs) you know, and I, when they are right, I usually don't care. Um, That's funny. Okay. So yeah. So people do, I, yeah. So you think they do that because they're, they're, if they're not trying to win people over, they're more, I don't know. Why do they do that? I, I always wonder, like, do they just need somebody to talk to? That's what, that's usually what it is. And yeah. in, in that example that I gave to, I think he just really needs someone to vent to. Mm. And I was the person. Yeah. Cause uh, that takes a lot of, um, you have to have a pretty strong capacity to be able to take on somebody's. Right. Yeah. You know, that's something with me personally, I don't tend to vent to people at all. Mm-hmm. Um, except for my, my poor husband. Um, but because I feel like that takes a lot of capacity to be able to hold on to somebody's stuff, you know, and it's like, not everybody has that. So I don't know. Um, okay. So a sexual boundary, um, that just refers to emotional, um, either intellectual, physical aspects of sexuality. So if you have a a healthy sexual boundary, that's basically just involves mutual understanding and respect of limitations whether that's like desire between sexual partners, um, but you know, that can be violated by an, you know, unwanted sexual touch Mm -hmm. or just that pressure to engage in sexual acts or even having, you know, hearing sexual comments. Right. Um, and it's really important to have these boundaries because it helps you really articulate the behaviors that make you feel safe Mm -hmm. and respected. Um, and not just in terms of like sexual relationships, this means like in all relationships. Right, right. Yeah, it's very important. Yeah, like you've been talking about the subject with certain people mm-hmm. and everything. Yeah. Does this come up a lot in therapy for people? You know, more of the physical boundaries actually come up than mm-hmm. the sexual boundaries. Okay. So basically, I mean, this is more, okay. So basically the conversation around sex and, and, and that, and then also to maybe with, if you're dating or, or with somebody who is trying to pressure you or push mm-hmm. you into something you're not comfortable with having a boundary and being able to assert it without feeling mm-hmm. like you're going to hurt their feelings or whatever. And there's a way to do that, right? Oh, absolutely. There's a way to, and that's the thing I always say with boundaries and with these, some of these more awkward conversations, it's not what you, it's like how does, how you say it, mm-hmm. when you say it, where you say it, what we pick sort of like the right time and place and like mood and, you know, you pick and choose that wisely. And, um, and if you do it with, good intentions, then hopefully they'll walk away understanding and they won't feel hurt or offended or rejected. Right. But you have to communicate that. And that's yeah. the part that people have difficulty doing is again, they don't want to like hurt the person's feelings. Yeah. And I actually have a client right now that is kind of struggling with this right now where she's in a relationship and she's not really sure about the relationship, but there's pressure from the partner to engage in sexual activity. And she's just not really Oh, you know, really wanting to pursue that. Right. So we're talking about like, you have to have these boundaries set in place and you have to communicate to your, to your partner that this is not really what you're wanting. Yeah. Um, so her, her boundaries are very porous. Oof. Very porous. Oof. Is she afraid that if she does that she'll lose? Yes. Her, oh. She'll lose him. Yeah. But at what cost? I mean, it's like, I know mm, there's the cost issue, right? So we're doing like, the pros and cons. Right. <laughs> exactly. And then like, I think. We're going to talk about this a little bit too. It's like, there is such thing as compromise, obviously in yes. all areas where that rigidity sort of gets flexible. Um, but it's important to know where you're willing to compromise and where you're not. And only we know that for ourselves, I feel like. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. Boundary around time. Um, the time one is more just, you know, really focusing on your, your value of time, you yeah. know, not being late to things respecting other people's um, capacity for like, you know, if you have an appointment, like making sure you're on time. Um, that's a, that's a, it, it, that's it's common. A, it's a, yeah, that's a hard one for, for a lot of people. Yeah. Um, you know, it's just, it's basically how you use, how you use your time. Yeah. Um, if you have a healthy time boundary, then you must set aside like enough time for each, you know, facet of your, of your life, like work, relationships, hobbies. And sometimes we kind of overstep that, especially like, I think more for work overwork many long hours not really respecting the fact that i have a family at home Mm -hmm. and they want me to be there at a certain time for dinner um and just kind of you know socializing and if you're working all hours a night you're going to miss out on all of that right that really extends that's as a further reach than i thought it would Mm -hmm. um that makes sense yeah because i do think that um again it's 
when you have like a person in your life, a client, a, um, a partner, yeah. um, whatever, somebody you're working with that is habitually late. That's mm-hmm. always a hard conversation to have, you it know, is. too, because it's like, mm-hmm. and it, cause it's, cause you know that for them it's, it's not, I mean, I can always forget like a one-off here and there, right. it's five minutes or whatever. But when somebody's habitual, I had one time I was working with somebody, I'm not going to say, go into detail, but I, I had somebody who I saw regularly on an ongoing basis for a, a professional marine relation. But I, I was paying them for a service. Okay. <laughs> so I'm like, I don't want, um, not really a relationship. that doesn't sound appropriate. <laughs> I'm paying them for this. But anyways, <laughs> you know what I mean? And, but this person, um, ran habitually, well, she's, she's not going to listen to this. I'll just say, um, one of her, my hairdressers a couple of years ago who did, um, my extensions, mm-hmm. um, I have hair extensions. <laughs> you didn't know. Um, I never when I, yeah, yeah no, <laughs> I know. Um, she was always at least 45 minutes. Oh, wow. Um, always, uh, for my appointments and, they, and those appointments take a while, you know, to do. And so I always had to, like, if the appointment was at 10 AM, it was usually wouldn't really get started until 11. And it's like, at what point do you, and it's always like, oh, I'm sorry. You know, always. Right. Right. I end up just changing instead of like having the conversation, I end up just changing her style. <laughs> and that's something that I do. Like mm-hmm. I do that. Like I'll just, I'll find somebody else because I'd rather not have to have this conversation. Cause it's awkward. Yeah. So what, I mean, I don't know. Am I, is that stupid of me or silly of me to, I should, I should know how to have, I'm, I'm a grown woman. I should know how to tell somebody like my time's valuable. Like literally you're an hour late all the time. Mm-hmm. Right. What would you do? I, that's a hard one too. Cause <laughs> in the same way as you, I would probably want to avoid that conversation, yeah. but if we always avoid, we're not confronting it and it's never going to change. I mean, yeah, you can switch hairdressers, right? Mm-hmm. But what if you really enjoyed how she did your hair and you're going to miss out on that? So, right. and you know, the funny thing is like, we worry so much about like what the other person is going to think that usually when we have a conversation, it's not, it doesn't go, the outcome's not as neat as you think it is. It's true. It depends though. I feel like there are some people that just in life are just, um, habitual offenders in some areas and they're not going <clears> to, <throat> if they've reached a certain age, they're not going to change. Like with yeah. my kids at 15 and 21, they're malleable. I can say like, listen, this is not going to fly. Mm-hmm. You've got to change this behavior. Like, and they're, they're flexible. They're malleable because they're young, but you get somebody that is in their late fifties, you know, it's going to be a harder. Too. Yeah. yeah so change. I don't know. I mean, I guess it's worth it to have that conversation if, if, if you value the service enough to not want to change it, but I found someone they're doing a good job. Yeah. Okay, anyways. Well, and even going back to that too, even if you had the conversation, maybe for her, she's not really, I mean, she, I mean, she's probably obviously aware that she's late, but if she, oh, yeah, if she's you very accept it, if you accept it, she's going to never change her behavior. Right. So yeah, she was very apologetic every time, which tells me she knows she's late, Yeah, but she does so not, she, she doesn't care enough to change it. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm thinking to myself, well, I think she even vented to me one time about a client. They got mad at her. Like, oh, my client was so mad. And I'm like, oh, crap. Like, you're like, and I'm one of them. And I'm one of them. I'm just not letting you know. Um, okay. So intellectual boundary. Um, that just refers to our thoughts and our ideas. So if you have like healthy intellectual boundary, that just includes respecting, you know, for other, other people's ideas. Um, and just having like an awareness of appropriate discussion, you know, should we talk about weather or should we talk about politics? Because certain topics with certain people, you know, is going to cause a huge, yeah. huge controversy. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, and so that's so it's like, like I respecting their ideas, what exactly. you're saying, or their viewpoints. Yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, that can be difficult too, especially if you don't know the person and you start to talk about a topic that maybe they don't really want to talk don't about and it. then you've already done it and you're like, what do I do now? Don't do it. <laughs> Don't do it. Mm-hmm. You and I didn't even start talking about some of these topics well into, like, I knew you for months before we even started talking. Remember? Yeah. It's like, you don't do that. You get to know the person, person and you first. find out, like, are they somebody that can have a discussion and they don't agree with you? Um, are they going to be upset? Or are they going to mm-hmm. respectfully disagree? And you have to kind of know who you're dealing with. I, I mean, I guess some people just don't care and they're going to assert whatever their viewpoint is regardless. But if you have respect for the other person, yeah. Um, I mean, this is just important to have because if you don't have these intellectual boundaries, I mean, then your views of what you believe is going to be disrespect and dismissed. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a touch. this is a touchy one. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, aside from like religion and politics and things of that nature, what else, where else does this apply? Is it like, um, like fields of, um, 
of interest or fields of like work or whatever like it could be i mean it could be parenting oh Some yes have very different viewpoints in parenting very sure. strong or even vaccinations yeah for children. that's a huge one huge right yeah. yeah i mean the parenting one we just had on um last week or two weeks ago i had on um I had on moms we talked about parenting, oh, yeah. like the idea behind like how long to breastfeed, how you know, whatever, all that stuff and mm -hmm. um, you know, co sleeping and all that. And people are very judgmental about it. Um, vaccinations you could do a whole Oh, you could do a whole, could do a whole episode on yes. that. So <laughs> maybe at some point. Um <clears throat> okay. So we spoke in the pre interview about the role that confidence plays in setting boundaries. Um when you, when you do set boundaries, it, people don't tend to mess with you as much. Right. And there's like a respect. I, I noticed this for me personally. Um, it was very obvious. Um, my, my health improved so much when I started setting boundaries. Um, mm -hmm. My mental health improved. Um, my overall stress levels improved. Um, and I think that that improvement is what actually gave me the confidence to stick with it mm -hmm. um, because I knew it was working. Right. And it's hard to ignore when something's working, like to go backwards. Like now I know what I know and I'm not going to go back. No, why would you? Yeah. Um, but I will say this for people pleasers or recovering people pleasers like myself, it is especially challenging to get it to, to start because people won't know you. They know you a certain way. Right. They expect a certain behavior or, and they don't expect a certain behavior. So when you change initially, it's uncomfortable for people. But there, again, it all comes back to like the way you do it. And I'm not going to say I did it perfectly. I know I actually did it because I, I just disappeared is what that was. <laughs> that was my boundary. That's how I introduced it. I am not getting back to people and whatever. I will become unreachable. But um, how um, are you finding that like with people, please? Just like, what do you, what do you do with people like that? I mean, it's hard because, you know, I, I admit that I used to be a people pleaser and maybe some capacity still am at times, just depends on the situation. And who you're dealing with, I'm sure. Yeah. I mean, because yeah. everyone's different. Um, because again, the same thing, I didn't want to offend or hurt anyone's feelings. And I thought, well, it's just easier if I just go along with what others want. Yeah. No conflict, you know. Because you're easy. naturally flexible. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> maybe too flexible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You know, but it, it took me a long time to implement my own boundaries and kind of like identifying like, what are my boundaries? I mean, you kind of know, you know, somewhat what your boundaries are, but you have to really clarify what they are. Um, and I realized like when I did set the boundaries that people actually, they they tend to be more be more respectful. It wasn't like a huge issue like I thought it was going to be because I thought, oh, if I instill all these boundaries, no one's going to like want to talk to me or hang out with They're me. They're difficult. Exactly. And all these rules being put in place, but actually it was like the opposite because there's no, if you have these boundaries, like good solid boundaries in place, there's no confusion. A person right. can't overstep you. They know exactly who you are, what you stand for, what your rules are. So to me, it makes it a lot easier. Yeah, It's just hard to implement them. I would think with you, it would be hard in friendships because um you would be everybody's go-to person because they know that you're um that that you're credentialed mm -hmm. and um so like i mean i could think of so many i'm not a person that will that goes to people so i right. would it wouldn't be someone like me but if i was that kind of person you'd be the person i call <laughs> i'm not gonna lie you know what i mean right because you're gonna have the best insight advice you're gonna be probably the least least biased um, the least judgmental. So do you ever have that with friendships where you have to be like, I've had it in the past Just because I'm a therapist sure. doesn't mean I'm your therapist. Exactly. <laughs> and then, and then, you know, I think people kind of pick up on it after a while because they kind of like pause for a second and say, oh, I'm sorry. You probably don't want to talk about this. <laughs> or maybe I should, yeah. you know, talk about this with someone else. I'm like, well, you know, I, I don't mind giving like some advice or just kind of listening. But if it's like, always becoming this thing where like it's always routine where they're always calling me or asking me then yes it's, it's going to become a problem yeah. they don't want to be their friend i don't want to be yeah you know friend and therapist you have to it's separate it's so hard it's separate. And, yeah and you have a hard and fast rule that if you're someone's therapist you can't be yeah, right friendship. i mean that's yeah. just kind of part of that's part of the work right yeah 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 the ethics behind all of that too is you know you cannot mix friends with work and you can't you, you can't enmesh that way it, it's it would be too complicated therapy would not be successful i actually saw a meme or it was like a reel or a video that was like um a therapist a therapist it was like a therapist ig instagram page and she posted it of like this girl crying on video because it said um just met my new client 
I totally would want to be friends with her, but I can't because she's my client. And it was like, anyway, and I was like, oh, I didn't realize. It was obviously, it was funnier than I'm making it seem. But right. anyways, but yeah, it's like, what if you you meet somebody and they're, they're like, man, this, super, this person's super cool. Like I could totally like go out for coffee, go out for lunch, mm-hmm. you know, whatever. But yeah. Um, okay. <clears throat> okay. So where do we leave off? Um, okay. What are some tips where tips we can share with our listeners on how to set healthy boundaries within an existing relationship and, you know, just in life and like everyday interactions, how to assert your bound. It sounds so, I know, asserting your boundaries. boundaries. (laughs) (laughs) I think there's a way to do it, but anyway, um, yeah, give us some tips. So first you have to know your limits and that's just before you become involved in a situation, you have to know what's accessible to you and what isn't Mm -hmm. and kind of going back to your values. Um, and it's best to be as specific as possible, or you might be pulled into that trap of giving just a little bit more over and over until you've given too much. Yeah. And then you kind of fall back into the old patterns of like me, like your porous boundaries. So you really have to know what your limits are. Okay. Um, again, going back to you knowing your, what your values are. Um, every person's limits are different. So they're often determined by their personal values. Um, and I think that's really important. Some people don't really clearly know what their values are so you really have to before you can set a boundary you have to know what those are yeah um you know for example if you value family love all else um you might lead this might lead to like stricter limits of like how late you're going to stay at work like the example i gave earlier um if you're working all, all hours of the night and not you know kind of coming home being with your family that's 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 a, a problem because it it's kind of showing that you don't value your family i'm going to ask you uh, sure. so um i gotta itch my ear hold on um, so it, I'm, I'm thinking back to my former self, like when I was very porous, porous, <laughs> I know oh, that word. <laughs> I, well, yeah, I mean, I'm just, yeah. And it, I think, okay, what were my values? Did I have values? And I just, I can say my, what my values were. My values were wanted to be liked, mm-hmm. wanted to be accepted. I wanted to fit in. Like these were my values and yeah, were my values like ultimately like m- my family and my home and more important yes they were but those things weren't going anywhere right in my in my mind they're gonna stay because yeah yeah they're the other things i would put above everything i would dr- literally take time away from um the things that were actually important mm-hmm. to be subservient to these other things because i was so afraid of not being liked not being accepted or being not being rejected whatever you know so we have our actual values and then we have the values for right now. Like mm-hmm. this is so, yeah. So I think that that can be tricky. I think, um, and now a lot of, a lot of that is like self-awareness and like yes. really like, um, therapy maybe. <laughs> I don't know. Yes. I don't know. <laughs> All right. Anyways, I just wanted to point that out. Kind of goes back to like some sort of negative thinking. Yeah. Cause you're thinking like, if I don't adhere to what these other people want, then they're not going to like me or, and is that really true? Mm-hmm. Probably not. Yeah. Um, and it doesn't mean that your, the things that are actually very, very important are less important because you are putting this stuff over and above. You have a fear yeah, and that fear is overshadowing what's really important. Right. And I think that the, the bottom line here is like that fear needs to fade away. Mm-hmm. And then you put those things, um, in the appropriate order where they belong. Yeah. Um, those relationships, friendships, whatever, and work, you know, whatever, but I think fear keeps us from doing that oh, so you know? much. And yeah. that's the thing that we, we all need to work on. I think that if the fear gets diminished, then everything is, is in order the, in the order it should be. So, all right. And, yeah. and kind of go back to what I said earlier too, with the fear. I mean, when you're setting boundaries, you assume that people are not going to be receptive to the rules or boundaries you're setting for yourself. When actually, like in many many cases, it's not true. So that fear diminishes because you see the outcome. Like, oh, I thought this was gonna, this is what was gonna happen, or this person is gonna take it in a completely different way, and it didn't happen. Mm-hmm. Then that fear diminishes. But your mind is so powerful that it kind of tries to convince you that no, this is what's gonna happen. This is how the people, this is how this person is gonna receive me now. Yeah, it's also too like. Um... If somebody is going to like write you off because you have a boundary, I mean, it sounds, I, I know it sounds trite to say this, but do you really want that person in your life? Yeah, yeah. Again, I mean, no, we hear that kind of like, do you really want that kind of person? But it's true. Like ask yourself, like, is that the kind of person you, is that the kind of person mm-hmm. you are? You know, would you do that to somebody else? Why would you let somebody do it to you? Exactly. So, okay. All right. Moving on. What do we have next? Um, And then, you know, listening to your emotions, you know, if you notice feelings of discomfort or resentment, then 
obviously don't bury those feelings. Um, you have to really try to understand what your feelings are um, and what they're telling you. Um, because again, resentment, for example, can often be traced to feelings of being taken advantage of. And we definitely want to avoid that. That's kind of getting out of that porous boundary category. You're, again, in that category of being taken advantage of. Right. In situations. Right. Um, and then having like self-respect. I mean, you always have to get, you know, if you always give into other people, I mean, ask yourself, are you showing much respect for yourself? Right. And you're not. Yeah. Because you're letting everyone overshadow you and just kind of take control. Mm -hmm. um, so boundaries that are, you know, too open might be due to misguided attempts to be like by, you know, like kind of like elevating other people's needs above one's own. So right. no one's way, you know. Because their need is, well, see, I, I know because I've been there. You, because your need is, your need is to be liked. Mm -hmm. So you are validating your need because all you care about is pleasing them so they like you and then therefore your need. But really, that is a false need. Exactly. It's a fear, is what mm -hmm. it is. It's not a need. It's a fear. It's all not right. like a therapist. I know. <laughs> Hang out with you for too long. Okay. Well, um, yeah. And then having respect for others. I mean, just being sure that your actions, you know, are not self serving at the expense of others. Um, I mean, your interactions should not be about winning um, or taking as much as possible. And so you have to really consider what, like, what's fair to everyone in this situation um, and then giving the setting, you know, given the setting in the, in the, the relationship. Mm -hmm. You know, you might win, but it, it might come at a cost of the relationship's long-term health. You know, we don't want to yeah. jeopardize that. Yeah. Okay. Um, and. I mean, this is a hard one for people because, again, being assertive, we said that word earlier, assert. Yeah. But when you, you know, you, when you know it's time to set a boundary, don't, don't be shy about it. Because yeah. Because the more you kind of delay it, the, the more awkward it's going to become and that fear is going to, you know, kind of. You know what, too? You said something to me that, um, that made sense. Uh, you were saying in our pre-interview, you were saying that, um, sometimes in i mean this was a part, greater context was involved but we were talking about how like during a therapy session sometimes it starts to run long and we don't i mean if we are a client in a in the chair receiving therapy we don't have a clock in front of us and right. we don't know i know so you don't know when the time is up and and sometimes the client keeps going and going and going and you have to say um okay our time is up kind of thing and then they're like oh my gosh i'm and you said so a lot sorry. usually they're like i'm so sorry because a lot of the time they just don't know they didn't yeah. know. They're not trying to take too much time or waste right. or whatever. Um, I think that we worry about it being awkward for us when really sometimes it's awkward for them. And I don't mean that's awkward, but oh, what yeah. I mean is a lot of times, like if you set a boundary, they're going to, they're going to feel almost that that's, that's the stinks, not the right word. Um, they're going to feel that boundary, um, a lot stronger than enforced. you probably will be. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The fact that you're even saying it at all. So, um, and I'm not great at this, by the way. Like, I'm really not. I need. I, I just tend to just ignore things and hope they go away. <laughs> but, um, well, I mean, there's been many times too where I've had a therapy session and it has run over, and I didn't have a client afterwards, and I just kind of let it go. But then I was thinking, I can't keep doing this because if I do, I'm setting this premise of like this is this is okay to do go, going forward. Yeah. Which, you know, next time I might have a client right afterwards and I can't do that. Yeah. So that, so it's, it's, it's very tricky and it's very difficult. Again, it's not about the thing. It's about like the principle. Exactly. Same with, yeah. you, with the money thing. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. I, I think again, like what you said, it, it really comes back to, we are always so worried about how we're going to come off. And really when you set that boundary, immediately you're putting it on them and then they re they see their own behavior yeah. immediately. And if they um, gaslight and turn it around on you, then walk away exactly what i say right um and just you know consider the long view i mean there's going to be some days you'll you know you'll give more than you take um and we all do that in other days you'll take more than what you can give um and just be willing to take a longer view of relationships when it when they're appropriate mm -hmm. um, but if you're always like the one who's giving or taking there that becomes a problem yeah yeah the one that's giving or t yeah mm -hmm. Yeah, some of us have to, some people I'd imagine, I do have to do this in my marriage a lot because my husband is such a rock, right? And mm -hmm. so I could easily, if I was the kind of person that would, I could easily take advantage. Like I could easily take him for, you know what I'm saying? Because right. he's such a, yeah. he's so he's solid. a nice person. <laughs> 20 years, like he just doesn't break, right? Right. Um, but I have to set boundaries on myself all the time mm -hmm. because I could, you know what I'm saying? Oh, like, yeah. yeah. So in, in no other relationship do I have that. But with him, I have to because I love him too much to ever 
compromise his right. in, the integrity of our of our marriage of, of of him i never want him to feel that way mm -hmm. so anyways yeah it's like but there are some people where the boundary issue is more about them like like in that scenario putting better on yourself yeah not for other people but, but for yourself. yourself like you have to stop yourself from taking advantage or taking for granted other people yeah oh yeah it yeah. works both ways yeah 100 mm percent. -hmm. so found i mean everyone should have boundaries it's really i mean i know it's uncomfortable but again too it's not this thing where it's a negative thing it's a positive thing because it's helping you it's actually helping the other person too even though you may not think that yeah it is it, it is people learn from you um i feel like in the newer friendships that i've made since starting this podcast because i met so many new people like it's been really mm -hmm. great i have been approaching them so much differently and um I notice it's, I think it's in the energy and the, if I think oversharing or overdoing it, you, you, that is um, a sure way to you're kind of hurting yourself. Yeah. You're hurting yourself. Exactly. Um, you're exposing yourself. You're making yourself yeah. vulnerable. Um, yeah. I could and it on. might come back later on to really hurt you in the end. Yeah. 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 But it, it's, it's just kind of like learning what, what, again, what is appropriate? What can I share? What can I not share? Mm -hmm. Thanks so much for watching. If you guys enjoyed this conversation, please give it a like and leave me a comment. I want to know what you guys think. Also, if you're looking for more information about how to be a guest on the show, please go to our website at humanityunlockedpodcast.com. We only record shows in person and we are located in Sacramento, California. Oh, and if you're not subscribed, make sure you tap that button so you can get updated on weekly episodes as they go live. Is that it? I think that's it. See you guys next time.